All right. Hello, you two. Small group, but that's okay. It'll be intimate. Mm -hmm. We'll learn lots. We'll move through it quickly. So what we're going to do today, this is um, the first workshop that I've been doing. Well, the first topic I've been doing, but we have three planned and um, I can also write more of these. But what we're doing is we're going to have a workshop that is um, from the About Time Project, which is the project that I run. And it is about how to become the person that you want to have people come to whenever you, they have questions about weird things. And the reason why I started doing these kinds of workshops is because one of the things we've kind of happened during the pandemic, especially, is where we are not having great conversations with people. We cut them off. We finish their sentences. We're not uh, necessarily kind to them. We rush to judgment. We assume we know what they're going to talk about. And I think that slowing down a little bit and kind of seeing their point of view and trying to see if maybe uh, we can have a better conversation with them is going to be helpful to our society as a whole, at least maybe lower our blood pressure a little bit and make sure that we're having better conversations. So this practice that we're doing today, it's interesting. It's about uh, UFOs and hair dryers and stuff like that, but it really isn't. It's just a case study that I'm using for us to be able to explain this what this phenomena of of having better conversations with people i mean we could use almost any kind of case study but this is the one i chose because i felt like it wouldn't be something that has uh, a universal uh somebody saying wait i believe in hair dryers and burns and all i mean it wouldn't have like homeopathy or vaccine denialism or something like that it would be, a, mm -hmm. it would be something that people would probably agree is probably out there on the fringe somewhere we wouldn't have a lot of conflict with somebody because when I first started doing these, I was doing them in my library in Salinas uh, with, and I opened up the doors to anybody in the library who'd wanted to be able to come in. So I didn't know what kind of person would walk in the door and I didn't want to, to tick them off and move them off to the side too soon. So um, this conversation kind of thing we're going to do can be adapted obviously for other situations but the situation i'm looking for mainly is those people that you will have contact with on a regular basis so a family member a, a friend a co-worker um, something like that not necessarily a person where you're going to have a conversation with them in an elevator or you're sitting next to on an airplane for an hour something like that this is this is something you're going to have time conversations over time so this is a workshop. So you guys can unmute yourselves because you're going to be participating. So that's the whole point. This, it, um, We could give talks and I've done tons and we could sit and listen to talks, but we're not really interacting. And that's kind of the part of the problem is we're not interacting with ourselves, with each other as well as we should. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is we have really two lessons that I really want you to to understand when you're about to have a conversation with somebody, when somebody approaches you that, you know, kind of has magical thinking beliefs. And that's kind of where we're going with this people who you can probably even picture in your mind, that family member or coworker who kind of believes in pyramid power or some, some kind of stuff, you know, kind of goes along that fringy area. That's the person we're kind of talking about right now, but not somebody who's way into QAnon or, you know, way into the rabbit hole that you really can't reach easily. There's, there's techniques to help them, but always the, the idea is, is that you want to try to become the person that when that person has some kind of questionable beliefs about something that they come to you because they know that you're respectful. They know that you're not going to roll your eyes. They know you're not going to, um, you know, have the body language, like where you fold your arms and you're like, they know you're going to have some kind of, <clears throat> you're going to talk to them about it. And then once you do, then you'll be able to have better conversations with them. And over time, maybe those conversations will become more risky. So where they're having some kind of belief that is really, really dangerous. So give me an example. This is nice having a small group. Give me an example of, um, Janine, you start off with, since you're unmuted first. Um, give me an example of a harm that is immediately dangerous that if somebody came up to you like within seconds right now and told you something they were about to do, you would say, oh my gosh, no freaking way. Uh, 
being mugged? No, like a dangerous belief. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I want to mug you. No, um, dangerous <laughs> belief. Right away. Like somebody says, oh my gosh, I just read this thing on the internet. I'm going to go try it. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> They're very dangerous they... right now. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, um, well, obviously don't don't fail to get vaccinated um there's got to be something better than that well i'm on the spot what am i gonna i'll think of 10 things in a minute Your turn, jump in real quick <laughs> well there's a drinking bleach it was in the news a couple of Whoa, a, okay. we, uh, of couple of years ago because of Whoa, yeah the guy yeah. tide pods mm -hmm. tide pods sure <laughs> uh a bit on the fence, colon cleansing. Okay. You're going for a colonoscopy, I guess. <laughs> Me. Well, uh -huh. mm -hmm. You should be pretty cleaned up by the time you drink all that stuff. Let me tell Yeah, you. that's what I mean. That's mm -hmm. that's the only cleansing. <laughs> um, give me some more ideas. What else would be very dangerous if somebody came up to you right now and said, I saw this on the internet, it says I could do this, so I'm gonna go do this. And you say, Absolutely not. What is that called? Ayahuasca? Oh, is that the st stuff they smoke? Uh, no, oh, they yeah, drink a... it. Oh, they drink it. Yeah. To have spiritual experiences. Oh, including... yeah. That would be yeah. dangerous. It's fairly elaborate. Uh, maybe I can fly. Somebody jump off the building. There you go. That might be dangerous. Okay. <clears throat> so those kinds of beliefs are not necessarily what we're dealing with right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> So yeah. if you have, so those rules, the rules I'm about to give you, rules I'm about to give you don't apply in the situation of somebody coming up to you and saying, I'm about to drink bleach because it's going to clean out my innards and I'll have, I'll have a better life experience. I don't know, but okay. So that, that's not the person you're talking to. That's the person you're going to say, okay, look, we really need to have a conversation because this ain't going to happen. I'm not letting you mm -hmm. out of the room. Because that's a dangerous belief that's going to affect you in the next hour or whatever. But the kind of things I'm talking about are the are are much more um, nuanced. You might not even see the harm right away, but it's but in time it may become more harmful or it might not. Maybe they can go on and live their lives quite happily with their bananas under a pyramid shaped device that ripens them or something. You know that might be the the extent of their magical thinking and really it's not really harmful but magical thinking tends to have one of those um cumulative effects where if you tend to believe in magical thinking it can it influences influences you over time and of course you vote and you have children that you raise with this magical thinking um issues and maybe maybe we should help them kind of come to where they start questioning some of it so the idea is <clears throat> you're not going to do and the other idea is that we had about this kind of workshop is the idea of debunking versus pre-bunking and um, psycon that just happened in vegas many people in the in the that gave talks talked about pre-bunking <clears throat> i've been doing it for a long time and i've always called it um uh, inoculation theory where mm, you inoculate yes. people against some sort of idea. And what happens with when you've inoculated somebody against magical thinking ideas is that over time they say to themselves, oh, I understand this a little bit. This seems like a multi-level marketing scam. I've heard about that. I watched that a video on multi-level marketing scams on YouTube. And this sounds a lot like that. Not exactly, but enough that I think I'm going to go do some research on it. So they've inoculated themselves a little bit enough to be able to say, I recognize this might be a scam. And then they can go into that area and, and, and do the research. So that's kind of what we're looking at is this idea of inoculating them, giving them enough information. That they start to question it. They start to see the red flags. All right. So we're not also talking, telling people how to think. We're helping them think better. The other... Uh, the other question I ask you when you're about to have a conversation with somebody like this is how much time do you have with them? Again, mm -hmm. is this something you're going to see them tomorrow at work and you're going to see them again? Or is this somebody that you, you're 
uh, vacationing with, you have like, you're on a week vacation with a group of friends and you're going to see them every day. Is it somebody you're going to just see in a, see once in an elevator? Ooh. They see your name tag and they say, what is this skeptic stuff that when you're at a conference? What is that? So you think about how much time you have with them and you kind of figure out how you're going to approach them. Okay. So let's go to, let's go to the meat of this workshop. All right. So we're going to be talking. Um, I'm going to put you in a breakout room. You guys use breakout rooms, right? Mm -hmm. All two of you. And you're going to have a conversation <laughs> and then you're going to come back and tell me. So this is kind of fun and I won't be able to see it or record it. So what you're going to do is I'm going to break you out in a breakout room and I want you to come up with do's and don'ts. So that's the first thing. Your friend is coming to you and they're going to say, um, uh, I have this magical belief idea. Give me um, uh, what is it you should say to them and what is it you should definitely not say to them, body language and so on. And you only have a couple minutes to talk about it between the two of you. So go over and talk about it and then come back and give me your highlights. All right, to have the heat on. As long as it's not on killing us. I'm recording. Okay, that was fast. Yes, it, it was, was very fast. fast. I don't <laughs> want to have stuff. I don't want to I I I pushing you. Okay, actually it was a little longer than I should have, but <laughs> just two minutes. Okay. Robin, give me the do's. Okay, uh, looking at my notes, open body language, empathy, active listening, trying to figure out where they're coming from, tell me about it, and uh, trying to get down to basic concerns that person may have. Okay, Janine, your don'ts. Uh, don'ts. Uh, your body language shouldn't be closed off. Uh, no, no smirk, no judgmental, no uh, frowny face. Don't laugh at them. Maybe laugh with them, but don't laugh at them. Uh, those those were those were the main ones, and uh, and don't don't automatically fly to conclusions. I mean, you don't know why someone says, "I find crop circles fascinating." I find them fascinating for the art. I think it's cool that people do that overnight and don't sign it. Mm -hmm. right. That's not the same as other crop circle belief, you know. 
you know, that's a really good example of crop circles. I'm going to remember that in the future because I think they're amazing. Me too. I mean, just <laughs> what the heck? Some of those things they do, and you're like, that is so elaborate. How mm -hmm. the hell did they do that? <laughs> I th you're right. I find them amazing and beautiful. Mm -hmm. I would love to have somebody invite me to do a crop circle. Me too. <laughs> that would be good. Let's go. Come on. Let's do it. You're in California, right? There's going to be yeah, a lot of places. Yeah, but I'll come out. Yeah. There. We're trying to get a Vermont group going. <laughs> okay. okay. We can do it in the snow. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just too easy. Snow angels. We'll just do snow angels. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work. Uh, okay. Snow angels. Okay. So you guys got it. So that's the idea. So this is actually a lot harder to do in practice than it is to just say. So just keep that in mind. It's so hard not to roll your eyes. They say the mm. better you know the person, the more intimate you know of a, of a relationship mm. you have with them, the harder it is because you just want to just go, oh my gosh, what the hell are you talking about? And you want to roll your eyes and just sigh and go, oh my God, you just always do this. Why do you go into this? You know, so you, it's harder to have the conversation they say with somebody you know well, if it's a stranger or you don't know extremely well, like a coworker, you tend to be a little more patient, but that's what I've heard in studies. So I don't know. Okay. So now we're going to do some imagining. So you guys are going to imagine your pretend friend here who may actually be a real person that you do know. And I'm going to get, we're going to go through this. You we're going to go through this UFOs and hair dryers uh yeah. scenario all right so we're going to practice i'm going to give you a uh the scenario don't go beyond it because you already know kind of where this is going to go but you're only going to start with exactly where I'm, I'm telling you okay so your friend has come up to you and they've shown you a photo on their phone they've taken their phone they said check this out this happened to me a few weeks ago it's gone now but it was on my leg arm body wherever you want to have it happen and it was wild. It's a burn. Check this out. And I'm going to show you a picture because this is what you're going to um, imagine that they showed you this. One of these. So you guys see that, correct? Yep. Okay. So they showed you one of these and you are like, what is that? Now, remember, they're showing it to you on their phone. So it's already been passed. And you're going to ask them questions and they're coming to you in good faith saying, check this out. What do you think this is? You're a smart person. I, I, I value your opinion. What the heck do you think is going on with my body? What do you think this is? I don't remember burning myself. So this is definitely not something I did to myself. Now, the only thing I'm telling you is that the person who's telling this to you is somebody that you have known to have a, a a propensity to go off into, I don't know, aliens in, in um, Alpha Centauri have visited, you know, I don't know. They're just people that you know have that kind of belief system that they're, that they're going to probably seem to think this is something magical or some kind of, I don't know, bananas under a pyramid thing. I don't know, something that you already know that's going to happen. So now what I want you two to discuss and I'm going to only give you a few minutes, is what do you say to this person? How, how do you say it? Keeping in mind that you do not know about UFOs, you do not know about hair dryers, you don't know anything about that. This is just what I've told you right now is that you know. So you're going to go into your little breakout room that I can't see, and you're going to have this little conversation with each other and come back and you're going to tell me what it is you discussed. Have fun. Okay, so those of you who might be watching this on YouTube later, uh, the first time I sent them into the room, that was just a little bit over two minutes, maybe two and a half minutes. So you get the idea that these workshop breakouts are quick. So you're trying to keep, you're trying to get them to focus, focus on the conversation. So they're about to come back right now. So keep that in mind that if you're doing these in person, they're, they're fast. Okay. And we're back. Yeah. So fast, right? Okay. Yeah. So Robin, do you want to go first? Okay. Uh, well, first, uh, enthusiasm and empathy. This could be fun. 
So yeah, that's so cool. Let's let let's try to figure out that out together as if it's it's some kind of interesting puzzle. Okay, Janine, did you get something mm -hmm. else too? What else did you get out of that? What'd you say to them? Oh, um, did it hurt? How long did it last? You know, um, of course, I'd also be listening in general with the relationship I have with this person for issues of domestic violence, no matter what Ooh, mark I find on somebody. Good. I, I mean, that's somebody's mentioned any, that before. That's good. Well, any, any, this. Mark, we never know what somebody's going to come up with. Yeah. Yeah. And some, and some people might, you know, might say, might not. I don't want to say own up to it, but they might be opening the door for something. That's just, that's, that's part of, you know, just one of the things I would be looking that's really good. at with any weird mark in, you know, and it shows you're so taking them serious too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I am required to report things like that, you know, um, retired now, but healthcare worker. Yeah. So yeah, that's, um, but also, uh, what was one of the other ones we thought about? Oh yeah. Reconstructing the evidence. Talk about that, Robin. Uh, simply okay. We've established you, you, you're saying you discovered this at this that point in your day. So, what happened? What was your day before? Everything you do, you did anything unusual or just not so unusual? What was it? So, let's examine everything that happened to you until we go going back until we we find something. Very good. You guys are right on right track. Okay, so very good. <laughs> and keep in mind, I'm just the facilitator here in this workshop. I'm just leading people along in this path to have these conversations. I don't have necessarily the right answers. All I've heard, and I'm learning a lot doing these workshops, I've heard tons of things from people, and it's so interesting the stuff that people come up with. And so there is really no right answer, but there is a couple things I want to hope in the future uh, when you guys come back from breakout rooms that you do come up with, but we'll see. There's only a couple things. Everything else has been really encouraging. All the workshops I've done, you guys are doing great. Okay, now your friend has told you this, and and you had, you've opened. You're 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 using positive do languages. You're not laughing at them. You're 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 uh, genuinely interested in what they're saying. <clears throat> Obviously, you have enough time to talk to them about this burn. <clears throat> now. Now your friend is feeling a little more comfortable talking to you and they've decided they're going to open up a little bit more and give you a little more information because you were so receptive to that. So what they're going to tell you is that they did a little bit of searching on the internet and they found this video, okay? And in this video, <clears throat> there was this guy and here's what they're saying to you. This guy, he's this older guy, he looks like a professor, he seems famous. He has something to do with the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And um, he's had a talk and he gives this talk. And there's tons of people in the audience. I mean, there could be 10,000 people in the audience. I don't know. They don't show the audience. It sounds like a massive thing. And they all are treating him with such respect. And I saw this video. Now, I'm going to show you two screenshots right now. This is from the video. And I want to talk about this. So give me your impressions as you see this, this, um, these screenshots, because I think it's important that we see it from the perspective of the person who's talking to us about what it is they think when they see this. Okay. So here's the first screenshot. Give me your impressions. Jean, give me your impressions of what you're seeing. If that's all you saw was a screenshot. My personal impression, I would roll my eyes just because. I know who Jacques Vallée is. <laughs> is. Uh -huh, but, okay. Um, that being said, he's got the professorial thing. He's he's doing his 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 uh, uh, Attenborough thing, you know, like the um, <laughs> the planet Earth. You know, it's like <laughs> let's look at these 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 oh, marks. You come up with some stuff that I hadn't heard before. This yeah. is great, okay. <laughs> so those were my first impressions. Yeah, but you would. If you didn't know better, you didn't know who Jacques Vallée is. It's would pretty you professional this? looking. Yeah, it sure is. Okay, Robin, what do you think? Well, anyone look holding books had mm. two points of credibility right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, 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 glasses got, or something, right? Right. <laughs> 
And that face, that expression that 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 says very clearly, uh, I I know something important right there. Mm -hmm. I, I, there. I get things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a slide, and uh, other people tell me how much they can't stand the slide, the font, because it is pretty scary there. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, that's that's the 1970s idea of the few of the font of the future. <gasps> Yeah. Font of the future. And so, okay, so this is the slide that's announcing him at this conference. And you can see there's some, I don't know what it has to do with desert, but I guess they're meeting in Vegas or someplace in a desert. And there's like, it looks like a UFO and a giant planet, a pyramid. And I mean, so it looks really new agey kind of. This is, gonna, mm -hmm. this is not yeah. going to be PsyCon or, or, or a, a conference that is going to be in the skeptical field. This is obviously something different okay let me show you yeah you can you, you can buy your crystals at the door <laughs> okay so here he is speaking and this is the uh the uh screenshot of him speaking robin you start what is it that your friend your friend has seen this video what do they see when they see this kind of image okay knowledge sharing knowledge um th there's an eagerness to his posture which mm. is nice he, he he wants you to believe in, and he he's got something to to share. Obviously, uh, he's obviously somebody important because he's he's speaking on a stage, presumably in front of people, so people are respecting him. He's, uh, I think I've seen him somewhere. Is he is he some kind of celebrity? Janine, you have anything you want to add about this photo? Yeah, I think some of his authority comes from um, age, but vigorous age, really nice hair, um, cufflinks, good. Yeah, look, those cufflinks. That's looking that clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Cufflinks, oh, nice cufflinks. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> with a with a like a vest, a travel warrior yeah. vest, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know he's got he's got a Swiss Army knife in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so this is this is what you've heard from your friend. This is the impression they get. Keep in mind, we may have different knowledge than they have, and we also may see things a little differently than they do. But, but to a typical person who isn't into the skeptical community, who's just kind of, you know, dipping into this and thought they were doing the research and they found a video and they think they're they're being a good, uh, a critical thinker by googling it. This is kind of might be what they come across. They find somebody who looks like they have authority, who's got a name. If um, they may not know exactly what Jacques Vallée is for or did, but he's obviously got a he's got a following, and and they're bringing him to a conference, and there's you know. So keep that in mind. Okay, so now your friend, I'm looking at my notes here. So now your friend has told you this, and and if you have that mentality yourself, thinking about it, you're like. Oh, okay, so this does probably look pretty credible to my friend. I can't assume that he they've read his Wikipedia page and know who he is. All right. So now mm -hmm. I want to move to the next slide. And this is a woman who has approached Jack Vallée. And if you watch the video, I only got 20 minutes into it. I've included it in the workshop notes and you can watch it later. I'm not going to show it to you now. He's talking about a case study that it, that had happened that people had come to him, mostly women had come to him to say they had these burn marks. They found these burn marks on him, on themselves. And he said, okay, interesting. He put them up on his website, but he said that it's really interesting to him if those person also had an experience with UFO or something UFO related. That's when he's equating the two. So um, here is the screenshot that I'm going to show you that we're going to talk about this part. This is what your friend is now telling you. I They watched this video, and in this video, this very professorial guy has, has been hearing multiple times people are telling him about these, these burn marks. And he says mm -hmm. that in... In a lot of cases, the people who present this information to him, most of them women, are also having UFO experiences. UFOs flying over the car, uh, UFOs 
or, or aliens they think they see on the sidewalk or um, they have hypnogotic dreams where they feel like they're being weighed in on um, or whatever. So this very important man who's going to this very important conference, who's got this, wears cufflinks and everything, has said that the burn marks equate to um, UFOs. Okay? You don't know nothing about hair dryers. You don't know nothing about hair dryers at this point. Janine and uh, I know read the whole article and Robin read part of it. So you know hair dryers are going to come up in a minute. But you, at this moment, your friend is just telling you this video that I saw looked very convincing. People all over the world, thousands and thousands of people are having these burn marks and they're this really important guy is saying it has something to do with aliens. Okay, that's what your friend has told you with a straight face. And you guys are doing a really good job not rolling your eyes or sighing or laughing at them. So, you know this friend is kind of on that conspiratorial mindset. So, how do you have a conversation with him now? It has nothing to do with hair dryers because you don't know anything about it. How do you have that conversation with again? So, I'm going to give you a few nope. So, go to your rooms and, and talk about how you're going to have it. I'm going to pause this for the moment. Okay, so that is very fast. Um, I'm giving you a little over three minutes. So I want to hear what you guys have to say. So what are you going to say? Who wants to go first? Go ahead. Oh, we're so polite. <laughs> you go first, Robin. <laughs> okay, no, all you, right. No, you, no, you. So two, two possible paths, it seems. It, it, try, tr try to point out weaknesses in what seems to be an unspoken theory that, okay, so I got that mark, uh, so I'm going to get ab abducted by an alien in eight months, more or less. So yeah, what that's, the, the, there's a huge hole in that slide, uh, that slide. it's the length of time between the, the two supposed observations. Um, and try to argue around that. But the, there's a second path that may be more effective is bringing it back to, to our friend. Okay, so what I understand is that you, you got that mark on you a couple of weeks ago. It's now gone, but you're you're talking about UFOs now. Are, what's your concern here? Are you afraid or are you excited that you could be visited by aliens? At this point, it, 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 is it, is this what we're talking about? And trying to be to look open and interested. Well, I'd be interested. It'd be really cool. <laughs> Nobody would ever come up and tell me this. <laughs> I, it, because, I'd be like all over it. <laughs> yeah, really? because if we get into a conversation with about Valisterian, that 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 slide, that movie, well, we we could be going around for hours, and we've got no way of fact checking what what's in that material our friend saw, and it's almost daring our friend to to provide to work harder to provide an explanation. Or to to prove us that it's it's indeed something incredible happening, and that's that doesn't seem to serve either her or us very well to challenge the person like that. Janine, yeah, that that's the sort of thing we were thinking of. It's like it's kind of a tough position to be in because. You don't want to drive them away. There's a good chance they're going to get defensive almost no matter what you say because it can be so polarizing to, to be... Well, they already know that I'm a skeptic. So if they took the, the, the chance to tell me this, that says something about our relationship. It either says that they trust me enough to talk about it or that they're trying to get my goat. <laughs> So <laughs> Here, explain that skeptic. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Here's a, some awesome evidence, right? Yeah. This guy said. <laughs> so you're on the right track. Okay. Now Robin started to say something that, that I would like to make sure you guys ha consider. Now, this is a person you're going to see on an ongoing basis. 
and you said, we haven't seen the video. So I'm hoping that you're going to say, can I see the video? <laughs> Can you uh, show me or can oh, you yeah, share yeah. me the okay. video? Because yeah. I'd like to see this because yeah. you're going to hopefully have more conversations with them. It's not somebody who just you're seeing once and you never see mm. it again. It, it's they've told you they saw this video. So, so you should say, can I see the video? What do I yeah, I've, just, I've said that a bunch of times, actually, to people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, because one of the things that Brian Dunning says in the article he he wrote, which I think is is wonderful, he talks about how being how to be a skeptic and not lose friends. And mm. I say it like, you know, how can I be a skeptic and still be invited to parties? Because nobody wants to invite me to a party because I'm no fun. And it is so hard. You know, I've got people in my neighborhood who are acupuncturists or and they're, mm -hmm. they're sharing each other's. Let's go, hey, you know, which is the chiropractor you use? You know, and, and you're like, oh, why don't you go to a real doctor? You know, I mean, it's 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 like you you got to know where to cut the, it, where to shut up and where to just go. I think I'm going to go look at the flowers over here or something just so that you don't get involved in these kinds of arguments and lose and lose uh, those friendships that you should probably have. And you should, uh, you know, these are your neighbors. These are people you're going to see regularly that are going to help you out whenever something's bad, you know, um, I'm not going to let Linda in. We're too far along in this. So um, what, um, what we're, what, sorry, Linda, if you watch this later, we're almost done. So um, what what I think is important is that we have this kind of um, safe face, allow them to safe face. And what Brian Dunning says this is where I'm coming back to. If Brian Dunning says, hey, you guys, um, if you shut up a person, you if you cut them down when they say, I saw this really amazing video and you haven't seen the video, then you're just saying you're an idiot. How could you, you know, I haven't seen the video, but I already know you're an idiot because you, you know, mm -hmm. you're invalidating everything they saw and you haven't even taken, had the respect to show them that you're interested in seeing the video. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how, how it is. So now, now you have the video and you watch the video. You've looked at the video, you've seen it and you've done some Googling. Okay. And you went to some and you found Metabunk. Metabunk is the like a forum that Mick West mm -hmm. runs. And Mick West is mm -hmm. kind of a go-to guy on UFOs, mm -hmm. chemtrails, and all that kind of stuff. Do I hear a puppy? Do I hear a puppy? So you've got, you've already done some research, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to go home. There's the puppy. Hello, puppy. Hello, puppy. You can't hear me. So one of the things that you, oh yeah, maybe they can, yeah, they can hear me. I just can't hear him, her. her. So what you're going to do is you've, you've read this article. Okay. It's the hairdryer article that I shared in the workshop that you guys should have done. And um, you have some more information. You watch the video. You've looked at the, the Metabunk site and I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots. Now, this is what you've seen and Janine has read it. And I think uh, Robin said he read at least this far. So one of the things you've noticed is that this is tends to be a, a pattern. These roundish patterns, they they are uh, disappearing in a couple of weeks. A lot of people don't notice how they how they they um, they get the burn. And then it takes a day or so for the burn to show or for them to notice it. And then it takes a week or so for them to go away. And then here's kind of what uh, Mick is showing is that you can see the pattern on the, on the hairdryer and you can see the burn marks correspond. So now you have a little more knowledge about what it is that you think it is i mean you you didn't you'd never heard of this phenomenon before oh here's one more screenshot that i put in here um you can see that sometimes it's not round sometimes there are these these horizontal lines that that I mean that looks really strange i wouldn't necessarily think that was a hair dryer at all because it's just these perfect perfect lines like something that you scratched or something scratched you and they were just perfect except they're burned so yeah i would be i wouldn't know what that is I would certainly not have thought of hair dryers. That's for sure. 
Okay, so now you're going to your friend and you have watched the video. Now you do not want them to feel stupid because you went beyond the video and you found the Mick Dryer, Mick Dryer, Mick West Hair Dryers and UFOs article on Skeptical Inquirer. Keeping in mind, you know more about this than they do. So now I want you to have a conversation with your friend. How are you going to allow them to save face? Because that's important. You don't want to hand them the, the solution. You want to guide them to the solution. You know, it's up to you guys. If you think it's a good idea to hand them the article from Mick West, that may or may not be a good idea. It depends. They may say, I'm not looking at it. It's too long. Oh my gosh, I'll get to it someday. I don't know. But how do you have that conversation? I'll give you a little more time on this one. So go. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, it's just us. So let's us and the thousands of people are watching this video right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, thousands of people out there watching this video right now. Don't you wish you were here? Okay. Let's hear. Who wants to start? Well, Jane came back first, so I guess she's dying to talk. <laughs> Go ahead. I sent my little dog away too. So no no more listening to her snork and make her noises. Um got the snores, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> well, Shock uh, uh, Valley, I'm not, I asked them to watch a, or they asked me to watch a video that I'm not interested in. I asked them to read an article they're not really interested in. Um, so like Robin said, let's go back to them again. Now that I say, you know, I saw something and really try to reconstruct their day. Although like, like Robin said, that's going to be hard to do because it's been many months since they had that little mark um on their two-year-old phone or whatever it was um so uh, ask them tell them a little about what you've learned what i learned from the midwest article and then say hey go get your hair dryer let's look at your hair dryer maybe that would be enough to make them you know oh hmm. that's good nobody's ever well, look at that. nobody suggested that janine not ever yet i i didn't that was that was robin's suggestion okay very yeah. good great <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, you tell me. Uh, <laughs> okay, go ahead, Robin. The dog went to go get the hair dryer. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, ideally, the person would come to that conclusion themselves, describing their day, and then hopefully they remember they 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 wash and dry their hair that day, and just saying it will be enough for them to consider. Oh, what if? Hold on a minute. Um, but that 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 almost never happens, right? <laughs> well, it could. If you've had the right conversations with them, you, you it, it's see. it's worth a shot. It's worth a shot. And so just pulling off the pulling out the article by McQuest is is really last resort. And if we have to do that, it needs to be handled carefully, such as well, I was like you, I couldn't figure it out. So I did some Googling and hey, look look what I stumbled upon. What do you think of that? That's true. And you could you could possibly ask them, would you be open to looking at this? You know, I looked at your movie. You can read my article, maybe. It depends or on we, the relationship you have with the person. Yeah, exactly. Or we'll 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 open it together and we'll discuss it together. And then uh I'm not telling you why right now, but I, I hope your bathroom is close by. <laughs> <laughs> you know one one person suggested maybe going from the angle of it mostly being a woman's thing mm. just to maybe help lead them more into it. you know i did some googling and one of the things that struck me was this seems to be a woman's thing you know women. well susan susan we all know why they abduct women <laughs> they're implanting <laughs> babies in them of course right Oh, that's check right. Out yeah. the cavities. That cavity allows them to be able to store stuff in interplanet, intergalactic. Does that have anything to do with jade eggs? Yeah. <laughs> See, we can laugh eggs about it ourselves. We're 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 in the same group. We can laugh about it. We just can't laugh about it in front of them. So that's why we need our community so we can have something to mm -hmm. okay. Whoa. Otherwise we go insane. So, you know. All right. So Okay, so we're trying to save face for the person by not hitting them over the head with the 
well duh it's a hair dryer yeah so again you're trying to have a conversation with them so that they come back to you and say you know when we had that conversation about the burn mark and yeah now that i look at it you're probably right it was probably i looked at my hair dryer and it was probably a hair dryer and the alien thing i thought i saw was kind of just could have been something else but now that i want to drink bleach i want to have a conversation <laughs> with you because because you because you know what i mean so this is what we're trying to do is how to do this without being you know shutting them down on the little stuff when the important stuff like getting vaccinated may be a conversation they should have later it's, that's where i'm trying to get mm -hmm. so okay we're getting we're, we're getting towards the end here so now also no one to quit you what yeah no one to no, quit yeah what no want you to walk quit. away yeah I've, I've lost a couple friendships over the vaccination stuff already mm, there's some sorry. relationship well you know yeah, you, yeah. Don't have to shed it. you have to end this at a certain point you have to say i this is not healthy i'm walking away same with the politics yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you're willing to talk to me in a rational as a rational person, then we'll talk. But right now, no, I'm I'm just not. I don't I don't need to do it. So so yeah, this is not. And somebody online, Facebook said, well, well, people should be called out for for having dumb beliefs like this. And they said um, that um, we can't convince everyone, so therefore we shouldn't be having these conversations. And I just think that's just a Mm. not a not a good way of going because we we aren't here to convince everybody and go ahead robin uh, also who's that we i mean we <laughs> we make errors of in judgment also we all have our over enthusiastic moments about something that turns out not to be quite what we thought it would it's not because we're skeptics that we were always right and we we need people to be gentle with us and to show us, well, think about this for a minute. That's a good point because our think about our own history as individuals. How many of us became, skept, became skeptics because for the same reasons of curiosity that we became <laughs> believers in all kinds of weird crap when we were kids. Oh, teenagers. I, I totally I totally yeah. had my hair dryer moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we're, I think that's, that's what a lot of people, and there are people on, on Facebook and other places that I run into or at conferences and they just don't, they feel like they've lost that compassion or they feel mm -hmm. like they've lost that, remembering that they had fallen for things too and i think that's that this is a kind of a way of going back and remembering where we are okay so i'm going to introduce a new concept real quick going back to well not new pre-bunking versus debunking mm. so this article by mick west is mostly a debunking article right okay. if you yeah. hand it to him like you're like if you're playing a a, a card game with somebody this is kind of like them throwing down the card. No, you won't. Here's reversing with that action. You know, it's it's one of those games where you're like, okay, I'm holding the trump card here. Boom. Mm -hmm. All right, we're moving on. Let's go have lunch. You know, whatever. You're not, we're done talking. So this is debunking. And a lot of people have talked about the a skeptic community being just a bunch of debunkers. Go, 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 go. So this is where I'm thinking is that maybe what is where do we go with debunking versus pre-bunking? What is the benefits of debunk? Okay, here, let me say this. What is the benefits of debunking? Is this a valuable resource to have? Should we have that still? I'm throwing it out to you guys to discuss. The benefits of debunking? Yes, like having an article where Mick West has pretty much gone down the rabbit hole for us, done the research, and come back with, here's the answer. Some articles have a bit of both. If it's about something as, as not world-shattering, not as important as these little burn marks are, as opposed to vaccination or overthrowing democracy or whatever, um then like that. Yeah. 
then if they get a little taste of that in something that's not very consequential, um, then that might that might help when they're introduced to other things later on. Like you said, they'll come to me because I didn't belittle them. I gave them some information and then I let it go. So maybe they'll come to me with something more consequential. That being said, the, the more emotional things and the more frankly cool things like aliens existing are gonna touch somebody's emotions more. So they're already them, whoever them is, um, Jacques Valley, David, David Ike, whatever, those people already have an enormous amount of pull. I don't even know how we would, how we, we're not that big. We may never be that big, <laughs> but we do have things that, that, that they like too, which is science. They're fascinated by science, even if they don't understand a lot of the science that they're being given. Yep. Yep. That has a lot of authority to it. So maybe that's what a lot of pre-bunking is, just feeding these little bits of cool, real stuff. Yeah, all of science communication is pre-bunking in a way. Mm. Um, but the debunking from different angle, it also shows how to apply a method to investigate those things for ourselves and our and our friends around us so that the next time we see something strange in the sky or those strange wi-fi names on our computers we can figure out okay how can i how can i get to the bottom of this how can i think and is there something more information i can get somewhere so that i i, I understand what's going on or in other words what would mick west do i'll get that on a t-shirt Nick. put it on a price <laughs> what would mick west do so so you know my thoughts on debunking is that if it's valuable, extremely valuable to have the solution and to see the method of how they got to that solution, obviously. It wasn't like Mick just said, he said, so some people believe the hair dryers, uh, that these burns are from hair dryers. I mean, well, some people think these burns are from UFOs. It's not, it's from hair dryers, done. I mean, that's like two sentences. So he's not doing that. He's explaining how he went in, he found this phenomena, how he um, researched it, how he threw it out to his Metabunk community who went and crowdsourced a whole bunch of UFO um, hair dryer, what they look like and matched them up. And so, so this debunking is showing how it's done. I mean, you can get down to the very end of it, which is it's hair dryers and that's all valuable. But I think that what we miss is the beginning which is what we're talking about right now and thank you guys for showing up to have this conversation with me is that it's there's a middle in there there that we're forgetting that we're, we're having a conversation with the with the person who has this belief see i've got a cat he heard hair dryers so he's here now i don't know why hi i'm milton it's yeah <laughs> that's hamilton right it's a bird feeder on the other oh, side the hat work. the hat the hat cat yeah one of the cats that has the hat so we're having this conversation with a person that we don't want to just say, oh, you have burn marks on you? Here, let me do a quick Google. Here's the answer. We're trying to have the conversation with them in a way of making it so that we allow, introduce them to a community maybe. Uh, you know, oh, there there are some, there are people who do write on this and who do research and it's very interesting maybe you're introducing them to that skeptical mindset. Maybe they'll go into Metabunk and they'll find information of people talking about chemtrails and stuff like that. And I hope that the people on these places are kindly doing it, you know, and I hope that to a person who believes in UFOs, abductions, I hope they would read the skeptical inquiry article of my Nick West and not hear a tone, you know, I don't know. To me, it sounds rational the way he explains stuff, but hopefully on their end, their first time looking at something in this way, maybe they, I hope they feel like, um, you know, he's not trying to make me look stupid, right? 
So pre-bunking, what do you think of Wikipedia? Where do you see that? You both have been involved in Wikipedia. Is it pre-bunking, debunking, or some mixture? Mixture. How so? Okay, um, because people tend to go to Wikipedia with a particular topic. It, yeah, some people like me go to Wikipedia and let it go from topic to topic the way yeah, some yeah. people do YouTube. But <laughs> you start with some yeah. goal in mind, right? You yeah. want to know how old some, so-and-so is now. Yeah, um, but yeah, some people, most people go to it because they've got a particular thing that they're interested in. I don't know whether most people go on to the other things that are linked. Um, I do, I know you do, but I think that, whoa, is it pre-bunking or debunking? Yeah, I think I think definitely many articles are both. Um, that's that's all I can, I, I don't know how else to describe that. But you're right, tone is important, but we only have so much control over it. In the age of social media, you know, you can say something that's very clear, but because your voice is not in it, it's just text. People will add a tone to it that you did not mean. Right. <laughs> it's it's amazing how things can be interpreted. Um, yeah. So I guess how you're op how open you are. A lot of people didn't like James Randi. They thought he was a mean guy. Oh. I've known him for I don't know decades, and we lived near each other for a while in New Jersey. He was one of the most passionate, compassionate people who cares about people for heaven's sake if he didn't care about people would he have been so excited to get this information out to them and so and so angry that when people hurt one another with 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 lies and and literally like yeah real bad stuff so yeah um That's but you know he was a very dramatic that, guy Randy. yeah I've seen him be really flippant about stuff, mm -hmm. but it's Absolutely. usually more about to the con person, the person who was doing the con. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much. That's absolutely what I saw. Yeah. Not, not the victims. Yeah. yeah but he would, but mm -hmm. the people who believe it, even though they're pushing it, they're pushing it. They still believe it like with facilitated mm. communication or something. They still believe mm. it. Or a lot of these vaccine deniers, they're, they really believe they're saving children. Oh, they're sincere for the most part. Absolutely. So, yeah, so yeah, attacking yeah. them is what we want to do because we're like, you know, you're harming people, but yet they're still believers. So in a way we shouldn't be attacking them because they're not the, what do you say? They are the bad person because they're pushing beliefs on people that are harmful, but they're not like con people where you know that they're, like a Alex Jones or whatever his name right, is. Right, right. Damn well, he's doing it for the money and he knows damn well it's not real. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to be sued. Mm -hmm. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, but I mean, there's a difference. There's a person no, who absolutely. knows they're involved in a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. And there's those people who are sincerely think that maybe there's something to this and just invest in it. Maybe, maybe if you. <laughs> so I don't know. So Wikipedia, like you said, go ahead, Robin. You, I think you have something you want to tell. Well, something about Wikipedia is the interaction with search engines, right? Few, I think, few people go to uh, go directly to Wikipedia to <gasps> search Good something. Point. They just Google it, and Google sends them to Wikipedia. So, my hope is that for many people, they they hear something passing, it sounds strange. They they their question is not is that true? Is their question is What's that? They Google it. First, first result is a Wikipedia article. Mm -hmm. They do that. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, this is that's that's a that's one of those old male scam. Maria Duval. All right, I get it. So if if we get them early enough, it's not really debunking because they don't have a clear idea of. They haven't made up their mind yet on what mm. it is, so that's more effective than try to attack a brick a brick wall. Very good, very good points. Yeah. yeah. So, so Wikipedia should. So you know, when I want to have a solution to something, of course, I'm a skeptic. It's sometimes nice to go down the avenue of seeing how it was done, 
So pre-bunking will help them out with a situation like when they think they found something similar, maybe they'll say, you know, like you say, oh, you know, I used to think that, but well, you know, maybe because of this other information I've had in the past, maybe, maybe I should look at it with a little more skepticism, like my good friends, Janine and, and Robin, <laughs> that I'm going to go to now, because I feel like they, they treated me respectfully with my, mm. with my ideas. Okay. So that's pretty much, pretty much my show. I'm going to be doing, um, so thank you guys for showing up and your animals. Robin didn't bring an animal to the, to the event. So he's asleep. Oh, he's asleep. But next time, you know, sometime. So I'm going to have more of these. See, he's got, he's, he knows I'm getting ready to get up and I'm going to go towards his food bowl. He knows it. And he's pet. He's like, pet me, pet me right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, ha I have two more lectures like this, two more workshops like this already done. They will build upon this idea. So your homework in the meantime, if you want to participate in the other ones is I'm trying to have more of this first lesson so that whenever mm -hmm. I have the second lesson, I can have more people involved, hopefully, because it's nice to have just two people. This has been really kind of cool. I'm not sure how it would facilitate it if there was 15 or 20 people. It would mm -hmm. obviously take longer because you're trying to let more, more, um, you know, people say stuff, but, um, there are readings you guys can check out. Uh, I know Janine read most of them, but if you can see if you can get through and look and see and see how far you can get, because I think they're interesting. I think well, another reason why I wanted to do this kind of workshops is I started them again in person. I think they're fun to do in person. It forces people to come kind of out of their, out of the, um, uh, you know, out of their computer screens and go and meet people. And we usually follow it up with having some kind of lunch or something. So I want you guys to have some kind of nice lunch or something after this <laughs> and, and think of us. But um, the idea is to also in my personal community in Salinas and Monterey County skeptics, we get people who join our meetup group. They don't have, they're not from the community. They've never really read anything or they're not involved in the podcast. They don't know who James Randi is. They're really coming from like maybe a religion. They came out of religion. And now they're looking for a skeptic group or an atheist group, something. They're not really sure. They're not really involved in this stuff. So by having these um, in-person workshops with them, I'm, I'm introducing them slowly to the idea of a community, to the idea that there's there are writers or podcasts, there's movies, there's this is a bigger world. And maybe finding Mick West will introduce them to the idea that there's conferences, there's oh my gosh there's books there's you know it's, there's magazines and I, I think well I know that a lot of people who join my group have no concept of that at all they're so new that you can't even just say oh we'll go to McWest for that they're like well, what's a McWest go to Skeptical Inquirer what's that so um this is this is a like a one-on-one -on -one. you guys know this stuff because you've been involved in it but not all people are are in the situation we're in right now he's almost barking at me right now the chicken my chicken i have a chicken <laughs> is in his way and he can't quite get to where where he needs to be in the sunshine now so i'm going to have a few more of these workshops if you guys find them valuable um when i when i share this workshop again the one i just did with the brussels sprouts at the top share it and and suggest other people join it so i can get through a bunch of people who've done this one and then i'll i'll, I'll put out the information for the next ones I hope I hope that works. Oh, any aha moments you guys had with this? Let me get you on tape. <laughs> Hamilton, did you have any aha moments? Don't rush me now. <laughs> well, I I didn't know about the Mark slash Air Dryer Burns thing. So the the I, I think it's a really good case study because it's simple. It's it, it lends itself well to that kind of of discussion, and I I really like Lance's concern about uh, at the beginning of this discussion about okay is there is there a problem with abuse violence in in this situation? So it, it's it's a very kind thing to th think to think to think about. Jeanine? I think I think reminding 
you know, it's a good thing to keep up front reminding myself um, of the distinction between uh, just responding with facts as opposed to responding in relation with facts, but in relation to the emotions I'm being presented with and try to temper my responses to not just with empathy, but just to really trying to figure out where somebody's coming from so that I can I can respond or ask questions for where they are as opposed to imposing my decades of whatever stuff I have in here and saying, wop, what about? So, yeah, which I, 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 I try to, th I think I do. Sometimes I, I have years ago, I was trying to be so circumspect in how I started some conversations that I tried to have no show no sides. For instance, I would ask someone, well, what do you think you go to Columbia University? You know, there's a an office of alternative medicine, which is what it was called way back when I asked this question then. And because I'm such a hippie in some ways, they immediately thought I was into that. And they shut down the conversation <laughs> thinking I, want to go I was in that job. She's so yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, even to this day, I'm like, should I go back and let them know where I was coming from? <laughs> which makes no sense but it's like oh i want to be understood um, right and, and i thought maybe well, maybe i could be like a, a go-between between these different factions but it's it's really hard because some people really dig their heels in on every side and i'm thinking if i was thinking of doing that 20 years ago can you imagine what it's like now the way people dig their heels in Ooh. <laughs> so maybe knowing when to walk away is is a real big part of it too you know you can tell you can tell a dowser what the you know you know some you have some friends who did a test and here's what they came up with and you did a test you know yourself and this is what you came up with i haven't met a single dowser who will come back the next day and not say well these conditions were blah blah, blah. i haven't met anyone who stopped believing in their dowsing so that's not an argument worth having, but I still think it's worth saying, oh, I heard, I, you know, people did this and, you know, my friend Richard did that and my other friend did this and they did this testing and it's like, okay, that's it. Don't even stay in that conversation. I know enough mm. about that, you know? I've never but had anybody maybe, who, you throw in a logical fallacy at them. Well, that's the logical fallacy of blah, blah, blah. And they say, yeah. wow, you're absolutely <laughs> right. I'm going to change my whole worldview. No, yeah, right. <laughs> it never worked. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> yeah, and and we need we need to look at those those things to do the whole logical process and the whole data gathering process every single time because we when the Chinese spy balloon story started what four days ago my first reaction was no that that sounds so much like a thousand other things we've seen looks like an UFO case yeah. and. It's probably going to 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 end up being a U.S. weather balloon in the end, <laughs> but th that that's a reflex, right? So no, I I, I went to the defense, see what the defense analysts had to say about it, and blah blah blah. And nothing that story made sense until you get data and realize, oh, so there is a conspiracy, there is a spy balloon above the above America, but is and it weather related? For what, for yeah. for some reason they can't shoot it down. Well, I'm looking at the news right now, and well, congratulations! You the U.S. has uh, have has won the balloon war. <laughs> <laughs> Your mighty military shut it down. Oh yeah, yeah! Wow, there you go. It, it is an interesting thing because the media pulls out these stories, and your mind is like, "What?" Yeah, I, the, I first thought when I saw that thing i thought well what do you mean there's just one of course they've been watching us for years what, what do you mean what are satellites i mean don't we have <laughs> satellites and drones yeah same thing why why would they use a balloon that's that's yeah, why use an obvious thing that's moving slowly through the sky i figured it was probably something that was weather related and mm -hmm. they're trying to 
I mean, that would be interesting. They have scientists in China that would probably be interested in the weather of over uh, countries like, or states like Montana. And I, I don't know, I just thought maybe somebody got permission for this and somebody else forgot or didn't notice that they got permission to be able to send a weather balloon in there. I, I don't know. Anyway, but that's a, that's a really good point. Okay. Yeah. So if I send, I'm going to put this up in YouTube. Um, if you would do me the kindness of possibly when I put out more lectures, asking other people to do it and think it and, and give your experience and see if maybe we can get more people. Cause I, I think these yeah. are valuable. I learned from them and um, yeah. Having conversations with people and discussions and meeting people, you know, like we're doing, I think, I think it's helpful. Yeah. And I like people. I like people too. <laughs> we have to see their houses and their cats and their yeah. dogs and, and all that kind of stuff. All right, you guys. So I'm going to end this. So thank Thanks. you guys okay. for joining me. Nice to Thanks, meet you, John. guys. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Bye.